How's it going you guys? Coach Wolfgang von Lattmann coming to you here with a video response to Mike Dolce. So Mike Dolce, he is basically a celebrity uh, fitness trainer who is apparently one of the world's leading fit, uh, MMA nutritionist experts, even though he doesn't even have a college education or a college degree. Although he said in many interviews that he's completed a couple of nutrition courses or something like that. Uh, but apparently he's coached uh, a lot of the world's leading MMA athletes and helping them cut weight specifically. Um, so I'm just going to go right into the video and I'm going to debunk it point by point. Um, and I'll let you guys judge for yourselves on whether I'm full of shit or not. So uh, the video title is five best foods to eat to sustain muscle while shredding fat. Okay. And I'm just going to spoil the video for you right here. This is none of this, none of this information he's about to talk about has, uh, has anything to do with like building muscle or maintaining muscle or even shedding weight for that matter. This is 100% just an advertisement for his famous breakfast bowl that according to the video description, uh, Chelson, Chelsonen apparently called it dessert for breakfast. What a healthy way to start your day. Also, I really want to preface this with saying that there's no way in hell that professional fighters actually eat this much fiber uh, close to their weight cut. Now, the thing is, um, loading yourself up with fiber is going to decrease your appetite, which is obviously going to make you eat less calories and it's going to be easier for you to sustain uh, the weight cut with lower calories if you're not hungry all the time. But there's two main problems with eating this much fiber, especially first thing in the day. The first thing is that fiber actually seems to increase the retention of water. And during a weight cut, you're supposed to be cut, uh, cutting water weight, okay? Some people will do it, uh, the water weight cut, like the, the last one week of a fight, sometimes the last three days before the weight cut. Um, but the closer you are to the weight cut, the more you want to actually decrease water retention and lose fluids. So fiber actually increases water retention. That's the first thing. So it's actually counterproductive for, for professional fighters to weight cut. For the average person who's just trying to lose body fat, uh, then yeah, like it's perfectly fine. It makes sense um, because you're going to be eating less calories and less hungry. The second thing is if you're a fucking pro fighter, you're going to be doing a lot more sparring and technique drills. And usually, depending on the methodology being used, a lot of fighters will increase their hard sparring leading up to uh, their fight. Um, and uh, regardless, if you're a pro fighter, you don't want to be eating all of this fiber first thing in the morning. Because you're going to shit your pants during training. Okay? And you're going to be gassy and bloated. So... Uh, I just want to put it out there that I highly, highly doubt that any real serious competitive fighter is actually eating this bowl. I think this is all marketing and this is him trying to sell a healthy weight loss plan to the public and disguise it as a professional fighter's meal plan. Or so it sounds. Let's get into the video, shall we? Hey guys, Mike Dolce here, four-time world MMA trainer of the year and leading weight management specialist to some of Hollywood's greatest bodies. Today, I want to tell you the five foods you need to be eating to get in amazing shape. Whether you want to get on the mat, you want to get in the ring, you're hard sparring, or you simply want to push that pace in the gym to build that summer buck. Okay, so all of these foods he's about to mention, apparently, are foods that you need to be eating to sustain muscle and shed fat, and uh, they're supposed to support hard sparring and training in the gym. Okay, keep that in mind. Body. Now, if this video is helpful, make sure you subscribe down below so you don't miss any of the other amazing content we have coming for you. So, food number one is oats. Oats are often confused as being a gluten-containing ingredient, but they're not. That's simply because well, that's oats surprising. are often manufactured in facilities that also manufacture wheat products, which do have gluten. Oats have no gluten. Don't worry about that. And truly, I've never seen any athlete, any client have any issue eating oats. Feel free to get the gluten-free if you must, but you must eat oats also. Okay. So you must eat oats, he just said. 
and uh, didn't give any reason why you should eat oats, didn't talk about any details as to how oats are supposed to help to support your muscle gains or your fat loss or your hard sparring, uh, other than they're gluten-free. So eat your anabolic oats. You must eat oats, anabolic oats, to support, to, because they're gluten-free. Because they're gluten-free, you guys. Uh, that is hilarious. Um, no reason, he didn't give any reason why oats specifically are supposed to be like some kind of magical muscle building, muscle sustaining, fat loss food. And they're the very first food he mentions on his video that's entitled, Five Best Foods to Eat to Sustain Muscle While Shredding Fat. What the fuck? They're, they're gluten free. Eat oats, because you, you must eat them. Okay, so I'll tell you this. Uh, number one, like, look, if you want a good, if you're eating a, a diet that's based on complex carbohydrates to fuel your energy needs, uh, then sure, oats, uh, if you can digest them efficiently and they don't cause any uh, problems for you, which a lot of people actually have problems digesting oats, uh, but if you don't have problems eating them, then sure, they're a great uh, source of complex carbohydrates to eat in the morning to sustain uh, your energy throughout the day. I know plenty of people who claim that uh, adding oats in in the morning with a little bit of fruit uh, definitely does make them feel better throughout their workouts. And it's been time tested time and time again, um, you know, eating oats pre-workout. Lots and lots of people do it. They add it to their shakes. So, I mean, it's not like it doesn't work, um, but I just find it funny how that's like a magical food, the first one on the list, and doesn't even mention any of that. But the other thing is that oats actually do have a lot of side effects for some people, believe it or not. For me personally, I actually had irritable bowel syndrome and psoriasis for a long time, and uh, I actually was vegan for one entire year. And during that time when I was eating the most uh, oats in the morning was when I noticed the worst flare-ups. And I actually found that uh, oats specifically, they trigger uh, itching of my skin and irritable bowel syndrome. And I would see them undigested uh, in the toilet uh, on days where I would eat them. And I tried everything from soaking to sprouting. The fact is, and if you look this up and you are looking properly, because now like you know, all the search engines kind of like exit a lot of these things out. But uh, there's a lot of people that have problems digesting oats, you know, and they go on an elimination diet of some kind, uh, like paleo, for example, um, and they find that uh, their digestion's a lot better when they remove them. That's not to say everyone has that problem, but there are a lot of people that have it. And, you know, gluten is is not really even the issue here. It's the, the, the type of carbohydrate you're eating, the types of fiber. And um, also within gluten-containing grains, there's another protein called gliadin that actually can trigger autoimmune symptoms as well. So it's not just gluten that you gotta watch out for. However, oats don't contain them either way. If you do consume oats, I recommend soaking them overnight. Uh, and uh, maybe looking for sprouted grains, uh, soaked and sprouted instead. Anyway, let's continue. Fruit is not fruit. Our, oats, not our oats now. Fruit. 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 Also, fruit. Fruit. We got our oats now. Fruit. We got our oats fruit. now. We need our fruit. Nutrient. We got our oats now. Fruit. 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 Are of the most nutrient dense. Food on the planet. Wrong. High in phytonutrients, high in micronutrients. These are essential for Wrong. all cellular activity. Now, Wrong. your macros, protein, carbs, fats, and Okay, fiber. okay, Mac guys. So, uh, fruits are essential for all cellular activity. Okay, so I have not, I hardly have eaten any fruit whatsoever for the last two years. Uh, I actually, I know a lot of people that follow Mike Dolce's channel will hate me for saying this, but I've actually competed on uh, in Muay Thai on a ketogenic diet, and if you watch my fight, I did not seem to be low in energy at all. My cellular, my cellular processes didn't just shut down because I didn't eat fruit. Uh, in fact, I was eating an all-meat diet during the time I was competing in Muay Thai, and there's a lot of people who do this successfully. And when you, after the four week adaptation period, you find that you have limitless energy, but during the four weeks of adaptation, you'll feel like shit. Um, but uh, anyway, I didn't eat fruit or any phytonutrients at all, and I didn't shut down at all. In fact, my performance went way up after the adaptation phase. So 
I just don't see, I mean, you know, and feel free to think what you want. Uh, even if you want, think phytonutrients are important, the fact is vitamins, minerals, and phytonutrients are way higher per calorie in vegetables, okay? Uh, that's a fact. He's saying fruits are like the most nutrient-dense food on the planet. That's absolutely not true. If you compare fruits to, to vegetables, you know, not that I'm recommending you get all your nutrients from vegetables because you'd have to eat a lot of fiber, but this guy's all about the fiber as I'll, you'll soon see. Uh, you'll be shitting your pants, but uh, anyway, vegetables are a much better source of nu nutrients per calorie than fruits. I'm just pointing that out, but if you want to eat fruit, that's fine. I feel like they're one of the safest carbohydrates for you to consume, but I'm just pointing out a fallacy in this guy's claim here don't matter if your micros are okay. protein, carbs, fats, and fiber. Macros don't matter if your micros are deficient. We Wrong. gotta get that fruit in. Wrong, okay? So listen, uh, what he just said, macronutrients don't matter if you don't get your micronutrients in. That's actually false and it's actually, they actually go hand in hand. So here's the thing. Uh, for example, vitamin B1, your requirements for a lot of these nutrients, especially B vitamins, actually go down, uh, depending on what macronutrients you're consuming. So, um, first of all, pretty much every source of uh, protein, even in the plant kingdom, also contains B vitamins. That's the first thing. So when you eat protein, generally you get B vitamins as well, unless you're eating supplemental like protein powders. Second thing, uh, when you consume carbohydrates, for example, the more carbs you eat, the more B vitamins you need. And it's my hypothesis or my notion, my belief that uh, that's why whole grains, for example, contain a lot of these B vitamins in them uh, because B vitamins are required for the metabolism of this exogenous glucose. So if you're eating refined white rice, for example, you're gonna develop a B vitamin deficiency syndrome, in particular beriberi and whatnot. And so it's actually very common. I've made videos about, about this recently, about how you can actually um, dig yourself into a subclinical beriberi syndrome, a B vitamin deficiency syndrome, uh, by eating refined carbohydrates for a long period of time. And that's why the government fortifies now. However, where I'm going with this is that if you decrease your, your carbohydrate intake, you're, you're still going to need B vitamins, but your requirements for those B vitamins are going to start to go down, okay? So your requirements for different ma uh, micronutrients are entirely dependent upon the macronutrients you consume. So this idea, this notion that, oh, um, your, your macros don't matter unless your micros matter first or whatever. Macros don't matter as much as micros. That's false, completely false. They both are interdependent. The exception though is if we're talking about refined foods. A more accurate way of, of, of saying this is that you better get all your macronutrients from whole foods because if you do not, then you're going to risk a deficiency in some of these nutrients that are required for the metabolism of those macronutrients. Okay, because you do still need you know B vitamins for the metabolism of fat as energy and other met metabolic processes, but hopefully you get my, my, the gist of my argument here to make sure we have high micronutrient density per total calorie. We've got the oats, we've got the fruit, now we're talking seeds, hemp seeds, cheap per total calorie. One more thing. If your micros are deficient, one more thing. that fruit in. So, one more thing. So he also said that uh, fruit is an amazing source of phytonutrients, okay? And he's saying that phytonutrients are essential and blah, blah, blah. Okay, listen, there is zero clinical evidence of a phytonutrient deficiency, okay, like a polyphenol deficiency or anything like that. There are plenty of examples of people who have lived either all of their life or most of their life or large periods of time, I'm talking years and decades of time, without any plant foods at all. And they've actually experienced nothing but remission in whatever illnesses they were experiencing. Um, and now, and I know you're gonna hate me for this, but the, the fact is now we have these groups of people who are eating carnivore diets, all meat diets, 
and uh, they might add some like dextrose powder in or some white rice in or they'll add some fruit in for carbohydrates because they don't like you know being in ketosis or whatever and they actually experience the best energy and the best health they've ever experienced in their entire life eating with minimal plant foods and so that's the first thing is we actually have you know observational evidence we can call it that you don't actually need phytonutrients we don't have any clinical studies showing phytonutrient deficiencies or polyphenol deficiencies, meaning studies, actual studies done on human beings where they do intervention trials showing that you develop a deficiency. We do have some evidence, actually, some clinical trials where they remove phytonutrients from the diet and they uh, experience either no change in antioxidant status or an increase in, um, or a decrease in reactive oxygen species. Um, now, this idea of you need these phytochemicals and blah, 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 has been heavily criticized and scrutinized by much of the scientific community. So a lot of people watching this may think, oh, what the fuck? Like, what do you mean you, you don't need phytonutrients? You don't need plant foods and blah, blah, blah. But these people, but you got to understand, if you, all you're watching are these, uh, these celebrity fitness trainers and these YouTube experts, okay, um, they're promoting their breakfast bowls and their diet plans and whatnot. These people are not who you want to be paying attention to. You want to be watching lectures from actual scientists who have presentations where they summarize the data, almost like a comprehensive scientific review in a video from a PhD scientist. You don't want to be listening to Coach Wolfgang or Mike Dolce to be getting your scientific evidence from. And what you'll find is that the scientific community is, is split between people who think, okay, there's some cohort studies and population studies that show greater health outcomes in people who eat more fruits and vegetables. But then you have, stud, uh, but then the vast majority of the scientific literature actually suggests these phytochemicals themselves actually increase oxidative damage, there's increases in cancer in these things when you supplement them. But when you eat whole foods and populations of people who eat whole foods, population data, which does not control for confounding factors, what you find is as long as like, the more whole foods people eat, the healthier they become. But this has not ever been proven to be because of phytonutrients. It's most likely because they're, remo they're not eating refined foods, which create these subclinical nutrient deficiencies that I mentioned earlier. It's a lot more nuanced than that. But again, this guy's a celebrity trainer appealing to like, you know, gym bros and what whatnot, making a four minute video about why you need to eat seeds, fruit, and oat to buy his diet plan, blah, blah, blah. He's not trying to make it scientific, and I don't even think he'd be able to if he could, if he did try. So anyway, um, yeah, there's, there's no, no evidence that you need phytonutrients, but if you can tolerate these foods that are high in phytonutrients, it's probably a good idea for you to consume them just because... Uh, all the evidence we have on people who actually eat these foods long term have greater health outcomes. But I would encourage you to look up healthy user bias to understand why that, why it might not be the, the plant foods and the nutrients in them, but it might actually be other confounding variables. And also look up uh, plant intake and meat intake in Asian countries so you understand, well, you know, the red meat data, for example, is heavily plagued by healthy user bias if you compare Asian countries eating red meat to American. So that's just to understand healthy user bias because otherwise you're not going to understand why anyone could possibly say you might not need phytonutrients because, you know, it's just, com it's just common. Um, it's, here's, it's just what, what you hear from other people. It's not an actual short, we scientific have high fact. micronutrient density per total calorie. We got the oats, we got the fruit, now we're talking seeds. Oh Hemp my seeds, god. Chia seeds, black seeds. These are essential Fuck. fat containing products. Hemp seeds, chia seeds, and flax seeds are three of my favorite. Alright, so first of all, all of these seeds are extremely high in polyunsaturated omega 6 linoleic acid which uh, ha is probably one of the main contributing factors to heart disease and cancer over the last uh, 100 years. We actually see as uh, polyunsaturated linoleic acid has increased in the diet, uh, we see an increased risk of uh, cancer, of type 2 diabetes, 
and also uh, heart disease, okay? Uh, and sorry if this triggers people, but I would recommend you uh, take a look at the book by uh, Dr. Johnny Bowden and uh, Dr. Sinatra. Um, it's called the, I think it's called the, the Great Cholesterol Myth or something like that. Um, I actually have the book, uh, really good read to understand what actually causes heart disease. And they preach a lot of the same things Mike Dolce do, does, but um, these foods are not, actually read um, The Big Fat Surprise, and you'll see a lot of the history behind this. But anyway, I don't think that hemp seeds and, and chia seeds are going to kill you, but I don't think you need to eat them for healthy fats. It doesn't make any sense. Also, all of these foods are so high in fiber, you're going to be shitting up a storm. Can you imagine eating this big breakfast bowl full of oats, fruit, and seeds, and then going and trying to train really hard after eating it with all that fiber in your fucking gut? Imagine that. Do you really think that these pro fighters are loading up with this bird food? Like, are you a bird eating all this, this, this fiber, this, these fiber seeds and, 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 uh, and oats and all this stuff? Do you think that that's going to sit well when you're rolling with people? If you if you ever feel really gassy during training, uh, and you want, you're wondering why, think about all the fibrous foods you had over the last you know 12 hours at least, maybe 24 hours. Uh, I can assure you, you're not going to feel comfortable after eating a bowl like this. Maybe after like two months of consuming this on a regular basis your gut will adapt, but this is a lot of fiber and a lot of foods that you don't need to eat for muscle gain. Do you really think you need to eat these seeds and the oats and all that uh, to sustain muscle and, and weight loss? Or do you think that there's other foods you could be eating? These are not magical foods. They don't have any magical properties like the video title suggests. These are not the, the top five foods for muscle sustaining uh, fat loss or whatever. Like these are just foods that Mike Dolce is marketing as his breakfast bowl. And you're gonna hear here soon. Seeds, I mix them into the oats and watch what I'm gonna do here. Stay with me because I'm gonna give you a bonus recipe at the end of this video. We got the oats, we got the fruit, we got the seeds. Now we also need nuts. Nuts, nuts are also essential seeds. Essential proteins, essential amino acids, and essential fats. Okay. Do you know where you get essential, wait, did he just say essential amino acids, essential proteins in separate categories? Is that what he just said? I never caught that before. Did he? Nuts have essential proteins, essential amino acids. And oh my God. Okay. That is crazy. That must have been, he must have misspoke there. So protein and amino acids are essentially the same thing when we're talking about foods. When you eat foods, you're consuming large peptides that break down into amino acids, okay? Some foods might have free amino acids, but generally speaking, these foods contain large peptides. They don't contain proteins and amino acids, okay? That's the first thing. So amino acids and proteins, they're not the same thing, but when we're talking about consuming them in foods, foods don't contain essential proteins and essential amino acids like they can contain free amino acids, but that putting them in separate categories is foolish, okay? That's hilarious. Uh, second of all, what other foods do you think contain uh, essential protein and essential fatty acids? Fucking meat, okay? Meat. Uh, I mean, really, again, nuts are so high in fiber. And also, all of these foods are very high in anti-nutrients, phytic acid, um, oxalates, and not to say that those are going to kill you or anything, but a lot of people have serious reactions to these foods. You should look up anti-nutrients. Um, there's a good Wikipedia page, right? Dr. Wikipedia. <laughs> uh, Maybe better than listening to Mr. Uh, certified Nutritionist with no educational background and uh, from college, but uh, not that it mean, matters anything really, right? Just because you have a college education doesn't mean you know what you're talking about. But uh, look up anti-nutrients and also understand that nuts with oats and seeds and fruit, dude, that is way too much fiber before you go train. This is what you're eating for breakfast every morning. Who, on what planet do you think elite athletes are going to fucking eat? Like, this is... 
I haven't looked it up in chronometer, but I can only imagine there's over 30 grams of fiber in this fucking breakfast bowl alone. What in the crap? What the fuck? You're going to eat all this fiber and you're going to go to hard sparring and all this hard training that he mentions at the beginning of the video. What the fuck? There's no way. And essential fats. I actually, instead of nuts, will use nut butter. I actually grind my own in my blend tech blender. Okay, so nut butters usually have added polyunsaturated fats to them. They usually contain extra peanut oil, extra, um, some of them contain canola oil and these other oils. The worst are some of the trans fats that they add to them. Uh, and as I mentioned previously, these are one of the main contributing factors to heart disease, in my opinion. Uh, so I don't consider that healthy at all. And I, none of these are necessary for sustaining muscle mass and, and shedding weight. This, none of this has anything to do with the title video. I'll take the almonds, I'll take the peanuts, I'll add a little bit of almonds. So, so this guy is supposedly the world's leading expert in weight cutting and, uh, and muscle gaining. Not to say this won't work. Most of this food is very hard to digest. So if you are not losing weight eating all this bird food, then... Uh, <laughs> then something's a matter. Well, then maybe you're just really efficiently at digesting all this undigestible fiber. Like you're gonna be full as crap. You're gonna feel sick a lot of times eating all this, especially before training. So you should be able to cut weight doing this, but uh, it's just interesting to me that this is like what he recommends. I mean, you know, if you wanna shed weight fast, yeah, eat a bunch of food that's terribly hard to digest. Uh, <laughs> good idea avocado oil, I'll blend them up and I'll actually serve that inside this recipe I'm going to show Okay, so he says that he blends avocado oil in with his weight cutting recipe. I, I don't see why you need to be doing that when you're eating all these carbohydrates. Here with you, we've got the oats, we got to the cut fruit, weight. we got the calories fruit, you don't we've got the nuts. Now the last ingredient, this is the secret ingredient right here, cinnamon. Why oh, cinnamon? Geez. Cinnamon has been shown to improve oh, insulin sensitivity. This means your body will much better be able to regulate the amounts of insulin secreted oh my in, God. Con in conjunction. Okay, so um, look, if you are not consuming a gigantic bomb of oatmeal and fruit and all of these carbohydrates throughout the day, especially the first thing when you wake up, you will not need fucking cinnamon to offset the insulin response. Now he's adding all this other like fiber and undigestible plant matter that's going to slow down the digestion of these carbohydrates, which can also uh, kind of like ease the, the absorption of, of, the, of the glucose over time. First of all, you so so you're eating all this fiber to slow the digestion and, uh, of of the of the carbohydrates to blunt the insulin response. Even though you're supposed to be sparring here in a little bit, so you should probably not be like eating all this fiber that's so slow to digest. But then you take cinnamon to also try to offset the insulin response that only exists because of all these carbs you're eating. In what fucking world? Does this make sense? Like, you won't need the fucking cinnamon if you're not spiking your insulin like crazy at times where you don't need it. And if you're eating this shit before training, you probably shouldn't be like trying to like blunt the insulin response in the first place. Um, you probably need to absorb all those carbohydrates that you're consuming uh, pretty damn fast too because you're about to go train. Oh my God. So look. Yeah, if you're eating lots and lots of uh, carbohydrates, add a lot of fiber to slow the digestion of those carbohydrates. Um, you're gonna feel like crap because your your digestion is gonna be slow because of all the undigestible plant matter, all the fiber. You know, and sure, add some fucking cinnamon while you're at it. You know, <laughs> blunt the insulin response. Honestly, you wouldn't need you wouldn't need the damn cinnamon as long as you're eating a diet that does not produce abnormal spikes in insulin. Period. So I just think this is funny. This is pop science. All of this crap is pop science. And uh, a lot of actual sports nutritionists uh, who are college educated, not again, not that it means they know what they're talking about, right? Lots of sports nutritionists actually have come out and criticized Mike Dolce, claiming that all he spouts is bro, bro science. And look, I hate that term bro science. I think that 
basing your uh, opinions on on actual like experience is very important. But this is all like marketing. This guy is like um, is a salesman and a marketeer, in my opinion, way more than an expert who actually is giving good advice that will work for most people. This all this fiber and this crap, and then recommending fucking cinnamon, you know, like the secret fucking ingredient. And all of this is to help you shed weight and maintain muscle. Uh, honestly, I think it's probably, you know, look, check this out. None of this crap is necessary for that. Okay, you want to know what will really work and what's much easier and is actually used pretty damn like uh, commonly and widespread throughout all the sports nutrition, especially in MMA, especially for weight cutting, is a... Is a uh, is a it's a targeted carb approach doesn't it doesn't have to be a keto diet or anything like that but you eat you know adequate protein obviously higher protein is very important when you're cutting calories throughout the day uh, you want to lower your fats to keep the calories down just enough to where you're not dying and then you restrict your carbohydrates to around your workout times and the, you know, I've worked with uh, MMA fighters myself, and I've been around it for years. I've been doing kickboxing uh, for over eight years. I've been in MMA for two years, um, and I've been training athletes and all sorts of people for over six years. And anyone who's watching this right now and has a, a background in in, uh, in in this kind of thing will know. Look, I'm right. Like the mo one of the most effective ways to cut weight is. Timing your carbs around workouts, uh, eating enough pro protein to sustain muscle, and um, you know, lowering the the fats to control calories. And it doesn't have to be a long term thing. Add the carbs back in after the weight cut. But like, this breakfast bowl has fucking nothing to do with the fucking goal. With the food you're consuming, making this food much more beneficial to building lean functional muscle mass while continuing to get shredded. This is the holy grail of nutrition. So, okay, how many of you actually think this is the holy grail of nutrition? Post a comment down below. This is this sounds like the holy grail of constipation and uh, shitting your pants during during sparring. Really? Holy crap. And then he posts a picture on here with, uh, it's like a jug full of, it's like a blender with fruits and vegetables and corn. There's corn in it and a whole banana. And then there's an intestine on the blender. Uh, yeah, that sounds like a great representation of what's going to happen if you eat all of this stuff. You're going to turn into a salad shooter like I did when I used to eat this way. I used to fucking eat this way. I used to wake up every morning, have a giant fucking bowl of oatmeal with uh, all these uh, seeds and nuts. I legit ate exactly what he's saying. And I was shitting out my ass all fucking day. Couldn't understand why. Like, no joke. So, yeah, let's wrap this all together. It's terrible. These ingredients can actually be put into one recipe. Here it is. The first recipe we suggest you consume and that is our breakfast bowl. this is the whole reason breakfast for the video channel. you got your pens and pads right make sure to subscribe to this channel if you this have is the reason for his video coming your way so the breakfast bowl one half cup of oh my god dude. one full cup of mixed berries what fresh, the fuck organic berries are ideal half cup of oats one cup of berries two tablespoons of cheese jesus two christ tablespoons of hemp seeds two tablespoons of flax seeds, all mixed in, boiling water, stirred around, absolutely delicious. Then we take the almond butter or peanut butter. We drop a dollop of that in Holy the center of the crap. It looks beautiful. And finally, we sprinkle on the little bit of cinnamon. This is one of the most delicious meals you will ever eat. World famous, legendary MMA fighter, Chael P. Son, and said the breakfast bowl tastes like dessert to him. He will go to bed early during fight. Okay. No fucking duh it tastes like dessert because it's literally just <laughs> it's not it's a, it's a gigantic carbohydrate bomb is what it is with a shit ton of fiber. And just so he can wake up and eat the breakfast bowl. I hope you found this information. I would have a I terrible hope... time sleeping if I was eating all that fucking fiber. I can tell you right now that I had horrible insomnia as long as I kept all these uh 
difficult to digest foods in my diet. Um, I don't know why, but I did. You found this educational. I hope you found this motivational. Remember, subscribe uh, to this channel. All so right, all right. Uh, that's that's it. So, um, you know what? Actually, he might say something funny here at the end. Let's hear what he but says. That, and if you want personalized uh, nutrition programs by myself and my team of world-class registered dietitians, simply go to thedolcediet.com. Right this now, is all use promo code the Summer 20, about. and I'm going to give you 20% off. If you want it, we got it. Until next time, boom. 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 That's the noise that you're going to make when you're sparring, eating all that fiber. Okay? You're going to go boom, uh, shit your fucking pants, and feel like crap. Okay? In my opinion. And I know lots of fighters who have actually eaten this way, and they've experienced the same thing. So I'll admit, oatmeal is a really big, uh, very popular food that fighters will eat when they're cutting weight, um, obviously. But they don't eat these gigantic portions of fiber alongside it. They'll eat uh, one-fourth of a cup to one-half a cup of oats. You know, maybe once, maybe two to three times a day, depending on the other carbs they're eating. Uh, a lot of these people will eat lower fiber because fiber actually increases bloating and, and the retention of water. This is a horrible idea. Now that I'm thinking about it, I doubt these pro fighters are actually eating this much fiber during their, their weight cut because it promotes water retention and bloating. Uh, and I should have said that at the end of this video. In fact, I'm going to actually cut, I'm going to cut a clip. I'm going to post it in the beginning of this video uh, stating the fact that all this fucking fiber is actually going to probably promote the retention of water, which is exactly what you don't want during your weight cut. This guy, I believe, he actually has a separate protocol that he uses for his fighters uh, cutting weight that has nothing to do with all this Dolce diet stuff. And this Dolce diet thing is just a way to promote healthy eating to the population who is seeking uh, weight loss and muscle gain. This is to help him develop profits and make you think you're getting a fighter's meal plan when you're really not. Also, do you really think the leading nutritionist for MMA fighters in the world is going to reveal his entire like game plan um, so that all the other fighters will be like, oh, that's the secret. Eat a bunch of bird food like first thing in the fucking morning. This is a lie. I it is my opinion, obviously, but you know, I'm pretty certain <laughs> he doesn't actually. I know these guys don't need all this fucking fiber on their weight cut. So anyway, uh, post your question in the comments down below. I would love to hear more some haters' comments, um, and I'm gonna talk to y'all soon.